why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Turn, hellhound, turn! All men else I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much charged with the blood of thine already. I have no words. My voice is in my sword. Now bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. Loosest labor, as easy mayst thou the entrenchant air with thy keen sword and presses make me bleed. Let fall thy blade on vulnerable crests. I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. <laughs> Despair thy charm, and let the angel whom thou still hast served tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Cursed be that tongue that tells me so, for the cow is my better part of man. And be these juggling fiends no more believed, that palter with us in a double sense, that keep the word of promise to our ear and break it to our hope. I'll not fight with thee. Then yield thee, coward, and live to be the show and gaze at the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are painted on a pole and underwrit. Here may you see the tyrant. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet, and to be baited with the rabble's curse, though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I will try the last! Before my body I throw my warlike shield. Lay on, Macduff, and damned be him that first cries, HOLD ENOUGH! I would the friends we miss were safe arrived. Some must go off, and yet by these I see, so great a day as this is cheaply bought. Macduff is missing, and your noble son. Your son, my lord, has paid a soldier's debt. He only lived but till he was a man, the which no sooner had his prowess confirmed in the unshrinking station where he fought. But like a man, he died. Then he is dead? Aye, brought up the field. Your cause of sorrow must not be measured by his worth, for then it hath no end. Had he his hurts before? I on the front. Why then, God's soldier be he, had I as many sons as I have hairs, I would not wish them to a fairer death. And so, his knell is nolled. He's worth more sorrow, and that I'll spend for him. He's worth no more, they say, he parted well, and paid his score. And so, God be with him. Here comes newer comfort. Macduff returns carrying Macbeth's head. Hail, King! For so thou art... Behold where stands the usurper's cursed head. The time is free. I see thee compassed with thy kingdom's pearl, that speak my salutations in their mind, whose voices I desire aloud with mine. Hail, King of Scotland! We shall not spend a large expense of time before we reckon with your several loves and make us even with you. My thanes and kinsmen, henceforth be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. What's more to do, which would be planted newly with the time, as calling home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher and his fiend-like queen who, as his thought by self and violent hands, took off her life. This, and what needful else that calls upon us, by the grace of grace, we will perform in measure, time, and place. So thanks to all at once, and to each one, 
whom we invite to see us crowned at Scum. Hail, Hail King, King of, of Scotland! Scotland. This has been the Youth Shakespeare Society of Pittsburgh's production of Macbeth. For more information, visit youthshakespearepgh.org or follow us at youthshakespearepgh on Instagram. Thank you for listening.